Hey guys, this is Kind. Welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited about today's video. It's going to be a makeup tutorial on this makeup that you see here right now. This is a look that I wore at Gen Beauty down in San Francisco and a ton of you guys wanted to see a tutorial on this. I was kind of inspired by like some vintage references with the hair and I want I wanted it to look like I was just like a painting. Like if you took a picture of me, it would just look like this 2D image. If you've been a long time follower of mine, you might recognize this because I did do a makeup just like this about a year ago. A lot of you said that it reminds you of Kim Chi's black and white makeup, but it was actually inspired by a video I saw by Candy Johnson. It was so cool. But I got to meet her at Gen Beauty and she was so sweet and so nice. But yeah, I wanted to bring it back, add some hair and some body and glamour and just drag it up a bit. I done evolved into my final form. Be sure to follow my social media and give this video a thumbs up if you like it, and let's just jump into the tutorial. Okay, so I'm back at it again with the voiceovers. So as I pretty much always do, I'm starting off by gluing down my eyebrows and my sideburns so I can start with just a really flat canvas. I have a way more detailed video all about this if you wanna catch the full tea on that, but we're just gonna move on and right into the face paints. So for the white, I'm going to be using this like water activated face paint from Suva Beauty, which just means you need to get the brush wet to use it. And I'm marking out the edges of the white with a little flat eyeshadow brush. The basic idea here is that we're pretending that there's like a light in the top corner shining down on us, casting a really harsh shadow on half of the face and completely washing out the other half. This here would be the third time I'm doing this look. So now I kind of just know where things are meant to go. So it might just be easier to follow my placement or, you know, follow a drawing or reference picture. I didn't want to go too literal with the whole shadow theme. It was more important to me that the lines looked beautiful and curved. I wanted some black to be in the white areas and then some white to be in the black areas. Kind of like a yin yang symbol, which really attracts me. As you can see, after I create that border, I'm going to fill in the rest of the blank space with a larger brush just for more surface area. And then I'm going to move on and use black in the negative space. With face paints, it's generally wiser to use lighter colors like white first before you use darker colors. If you mess up with a white, you can easily go over it with black, but with black, if you mess up and stray too far outside the lines, you can't go over it with white. You can try and it'll turn some shade of gray, but light colors are more sheer and they don't have the opacity to overlap anything, so they always have to be the bottom layer. And this applies with eyeshadows, foundations, anything. Anyway, now I'm using Ben Nye's Clown White, which is a white cream paint, and I'm gonna use this over the white because white face paint is just one of those things that are really hard to get even coverage with. So I do the initial base coat with water-based face paint because it's faster, and then I fill in the patchiness with this cream paint. The only downside here is that cream paints must be set with powder to avoid smudging. So set it with either a white eyeshadow or a colorless powder, and then we're gonna move on to the eyes. Excuse my gross nails here, by the way, but I'm taking this gray eyeshadow and later I'll take a black eyeshadow and I'm smoking out the eye socket on the white side so I can create this kind of moon-shaped blank space in the inner lid that mirrors the shape that we created on the other eye with face paints. And I'm actually gonna add black eyeshadow to that other eye crease too, because I want for both eyes to be kind of smoky. That way not everything on the face is super harsh and graphic and it'll just set the eyes apart and make them look more alive with the blended edges. I'm doing eyeliner next, which I'm gonna smoke out into the black eyeshadow. This is just a way for me to ensure that the black smoky eye is as black as the eyeliner. I hate when they're like different shades of black. It's just a small detail I always notice. You can do this to both eyes, just know that on the one eye, you're gonna wanna fade it into the dark abyss of your face. Next, I'm gonna take the eyeliner and draw some bottom liner, angling it up a bit so it's lower on the tear duct and then wings out at the ends to kind of draw the eye into like a feline shape and then I'm gonna fill it in with more white cream paint. I'm also gonna take a small angled brush and smoke out that lower liner with more black eyeshadow, just so it's as blended as the top eye. Next, I'm gonna put on my eyebrows with just black eyeliner. Aside from being an important step for like a glam look, I wanted to add this because like I said earlier, I love the addition of a little black in the white and then a little white within the black. It gives the eye a little something to play with while you're looking at the face. Here, I'm painting my lips and I recommend using like a liquid lipstick or at the very least eyeliner so you can talk and eat during the day without this fading. But I was lazy and I was gonna take this off anyway and I just used my face paint, but do as I say and not as I do. 
Now we've moved on to the body, which is largely going to be dependent on what kind of top you're wearing and how much of your body is exposed. I just painted this like half white and half black, adding a little more white to the collarbone and then taking the black line down in the diagonal to make this area a little bit interesting to look at, but not too much so that it won't pull any focus away from the face. Whenever I do looks that require the body be painted, I always, without exception, wear some like long opera gloves so it cuts down the area that I have to paint. Anything that can make my life easier without taking away from the fantasy and from the illusion. I'm not going to go over this with white cream paint like I did on the face. You can if you find that it's looking patchy, but I was okay with it. I just tend to put lots more attention to detail on the face than I do on my chest and my arms. The final step now was going to be mascara and lashes. I don't know why I always wait until the end to do this. I think lashes just like feel uncomfortable for me, so I like to wait until the last possible moment to put them on. But that's the finished makeup look, you guys. This is the finished look everyone. I hope you liked it as much as I did. The hair tutorial on these like vintage victory rolls is coming soon. I have a few wigs that are on their way in the mail so I'm gonna wait till those come in to do the hair tutorial. Until that comes you can leave me some requests for other videos you want to see from me. I'm always down in the comments. I read each and every one. Um, so be sure to leave me a comment and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!